put anyone with the speed that Mayweather has. And Mayweather has a solid amateur background also, similar to Corrales. It's going to be a very interesting fight. Corrales definitely is the better puncher between the two. But Mayweather has a lot of experience, and that blinding speed of his can neutralize a lot of things that Corrales was affected to do tonight. And uh, unlike Angel Manfredi, who walked to Corrales in the early part of the bout, Floyd Mayweather isn't going to do that. He's going to go out and be an elusive target. And Mayweather's definitely going to do a lot of different things. He's not going to be as steady and predictable as the fighter was tonight because it's the experience that he's had. All right, let's go back into the ring and see what Angel Manfredi has to say after this loss. Angel, you're in with a real tough customer and an outstanding fighter tonight. When you were knocked down in the first round, it appeared that that was a punch you never saw. Uh, I guess first I'd like to thank my father, uh, God, my Savior Jesus Christ for everything, you know what I mean? The main thing, you know what, uh, I got off the streets and that's the main thing. I'm happy, you know what I'm saying? Uh, as far as Diego, I take none away from him. He's a beautiful fighter. Uh, the first knock I guess, was a surprise. You know, I, I felt kind of weird when I got into the ring, but uh, no excuses, you know what I'm saying? I'm not a champion that gives excuses, so uh, no excuses, and uh, I give it up to him, you know, God bless him. What do you mean you felt weird? I, I, I felt kind of spacey-like, you know? I, I just didn't feel right. You know, I just didn't feel right for some reason, you know? Yet you came back in the second round and had a very effective round after that devastating knockdown. But true, true, I had to adapt, you know? I had to adapt even though I didn't feel right. I still had to adapt to it, and I came back in the second round, but I just didn't feel right, uh, Larry. How big a puncher is he? Uh, he's, a, he's a good puncher, but I've been hit harder. You know what I mean? But uh, I take away nothing from Diego. He's a good fighter, uh, good combinations. Uh, but uh, God bless, you know, God bless HBO. Thank you for having me. What do you think of him versus Mayweather having ex experienced both of their lightnings? Uh, I mean, I, I can't really say, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, may the best man win. God bless them both, you know what I mean? Uh, but right now, Mayweather, uh, you know, he, he just ain't right mentally. So, uh, and Diego, I mean, he, you know, it'd be a good fight. I like to see it, you know, on HBO. God bless. Thank you very much, Angel. God Jim? God bless. Good sport, Angel Man Freddy. And as we mentioned, a real professional fighter. May not be the last time we see him here on HBO. There'll be some other showcases down the road where Angel Man Freddy can be meaningful, particularly, I think, if he goes back to 135 pounds. Still tonight, our main event coming up very shortly between Eric El Terrible Morales, unbeaten, as was Diego Corrales, and Kevin Kelly taking the fight on less than a month's notice, but perhaps posing a real competitive challenge for Morales. We'll see in a minute. Now let's look ahead to some upcoming programs here on HBO. Mark your calendars for these upcoming shows. September 9, it's a unique night of boxing on HBO. KO Nation returns with Clifford Etienne fighting Clifford Kowser and Bronco McCart in a rematch against Winky Wright. Later that same night on TV KO pay-per-view, undisputed light heavyweight champion Roy Jones comes to New Orleans to take on Eric Harding. Also, Marco Antonio Barrera returns to the ring against Jose Luis Balbuena. Each Thursday, tune in to Inside the NFL. Future Hall of Famer Dan Marino has joined the cast, which, as always, includes Len Dawson, Chris Collinsworth, Nick Bonacati, and Jerry Glanville. Tune in Tuesday, September 12th, for the next edition of Real Sports with Bryant Gumbel. Among the stories, an investigation into celebrity charitable foundations such as Sammy Sosa's. Are they being run properly? Where is the money going? Also, we'll tell you why the best high jumper in the world is allowed to compete in the Olympics after testing positive for cocaine. Real sports, where nothing is out of bounds. And we bring you back to the Don Haskins Center on the campus of the University of Texas at El Paso. Haskins, of course, the legendary coach who took the minors of Texas Western before it was even called UTEP to the national championship in 1966. Coming up now, the main event between Eric Morales and Kevin Kelly as this edition of HBO's Boxing After Dark features identical twin attractions. Two fights in which unbeaten young stars of the sport have a chance to lose against real professional opponents. Twin fights, the second of the two, coming up with love to you right now. And 
As we get ready to watch Kevin Kelly, Larry Merchant, uh, you can't help but reflect that we've known Kevin for several years. He is, of course, if not the best talker in the sport, certainly among the top two or three. He's been talking retirement for a few years now, even while constructing his broadcasting career to follow his fighting career. He is, as you know, the expert commentator on our KO Nation series. So taking this fight against one of the top fighters in the sport on a month's notice, is it a real fight for Kevin Kelly or just a contribution to his pension fund? Who knows? Maybe it's his last hurrah. Maybe if he looks bad enough, the Prince will finally give him the rematch <laughs> that he deserves. An issue for a 33-year-old veteran is really one of commitment 24-7, as they say these days. Kelly, who was the best American featherweight of the 90s, an irrepressible warrior and conversationalist, admits that now he's down to about five and five, five hours a day, five days of the week. Just to test figuratively where his commitment is, I asked him the other day, are you prepared to die to win? For the only time we've ever known him, he was momentarily silence but that question will be asked by Morales tonight and he needs to have an answer indeed a pertinent question because if ever two fighters have proven that they were prepared to die to win <laughs> it was when Eric Morales fought earlier this year on February 19 in Las Vegas against Marco Antonio Barrera if you saw it you'll never forget it it was unquestionably the most vicious warfare to be seen in the ring in recent years. Barrera and Morales went at each other like this virtually through the entire 12 rounds. And though many at ringside felt that Barrera deserved the decision, it was in the end Eric Morales who was given the call in a very close split decision. Some thought it was political to his great credit when Eric was asked after the fight about that decision and whether he deserved it. He sort of by bypassed the question and said, hey, well, the most important thing is we fought a great fight for the glory of the sport and the honor of Mexico. Emmanuel Stewart, that was only seven months ago. He's moved up a weight class. He has had one fight in the new weight class. But some people believe that a war like that takes a lot out of a fighter for the rest of his career. Do you think Eric Morales is affected by his war with Barrera as he gets into the ring with Kevin Kelly tonight? Personally, I don't think that the fight is going to take that much of an effect on him. I think that he has had a proper rest. And the fact that he's fighting in this proper weight division now at 126 pounds is going to be a big asset for him. And you're going to see a good, strong fighter tonight. And, of course, uh, it's partially an audition for Morales, who looks for a shot against Emmanuel's man, Prince Nassim Hamed, and all the big money that would go with that. Kevin Kelly knocked down Hamed three times in December of 1997, and he'd like another chance at him. So it's an audition for Kevin as well. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape now for Kevin Kelly against Eric Morales, and you'll see the nine-year age difference, which may or may not be the pertinent stat in the fight. Morales with a one-inch height advantage. Morales with a three-inch reach each advantage. They have gained only four and six pounds since yesterday's weigh-in, which indicates that both fighters were in tremendous shape as they came in for this fight. Kevin Kelly says, hey, I'm no last-minute throw-in. I've been training all year. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Eric El Terrible Morales Kevin Kelly fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. All right, Harold. And it's KO Nation time as Kevin Kelly prepares to enter the ring. I feel as though Ann Lovett should be here to uh, announce this entrance for him. There's the record since the loss to Prince Nassim. Kevin. Kevin, we talked about this, remember? Pressure. Of course, one thing we haven't mentioned, Kevin is a southpaw, Morales is a conventional fighter, and sometimes that brings an advantage, although Morales says southpaws don't bother me, I've been fighting them my whole life in Tijuana. A closer look, Larry Merchant at the Flushing Flash. This is the 13th year that Kevin Kelly has been a professional. He was a featherweight when he started. 
unusually, he is still a featherweight. But he still bristles, he thought, because he had to win 36 fights before he could get a shot at the title that was normally owned by Hispanic fighters. So, is this a payback for him? For all that frustration he went through? Or is it merely a payday? You heard what Emmanuel Stewart said about Eric Morales and how he does not think Morales will be affected by the war with Barrera coming in. You have a different point of view. Uh, I, I think that because he's young, he can surely overcome it. But both Morales and Barrera left a piece of themselves in that ring that night, and it takes time to restore yourself. The question then becomes, whether Kevin Kelly has enough to exploit that. El Terrible won his first world championship here in El Paso against Daniel Zaragoza. He is tremendously popular here. Closer look at Eric Morales. Eric Morales says he will be restored from that brutal fight because of how hard he trains. He used the term Spartan, but also because he took so many punches in that fight, he hired as a part-time trainer Floyd Mayweather Sr. to help him some with his defense. In that fight, Morales and Barrera landed a total of 600 power punches, 50 per round, more than twice the normal number of hard punches landed. And keep in mind, of course, Floyd Mayweather Sr. is now officially divorced from his son Floyd Jr.'s career. So if Morales were ever to get a shot to fight Mayweather Jr., he might do it with Mayweather Jr.'s father in his corner. While you're watching the fight tonight, log on to HBO.com slash boxing, where you'll be able to judge the fights and answer the question, who is the best 126-pound fighter? Is it Prince Nassim Hamed, or is it one of the two recent entrants into the division, Marco Antonio Barrera or Eric Morales? Or you can vote for some other 126-pound fighter as you choose. We'll give you the results at the end of the evening. Now let's go up to ring announcer Michael Buffer to start this one off. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Y ahora, damas y caballeros, Top Rank Incorporated and La Cerveza Más Fina Corona Extra with the Speaking Rock Casino of El Paso present the featured bout of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the vacant WBC Featherweight Interim World Championship. Sanctioned by the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation, Executive Director Bill Kuntz, Boxing Administrator Dick Cole. The scoring for this bout will be done on a 10-point must system. The three judges assigned to ringside are Robert Gonzalez, Sherry Roth, and Pablo Scarco. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Lawrence Cole. And now for the thousands in attendance and the millions around the world watching Boxing After Dark on HBO from El Paso, Texas. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white, trimmed with blue, and weighing in at 126 pounds. He has a perfect professional record consisting of 37 contests, 37 victories, including 29 knockouts. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the former undefeated super bantamweight champion of the world, de Sona Norte, Tijuana, Baja, California, Mexico, Eric El Terrible. his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner wearing purple trimmed with orange and weighing in at 126 pounds also he has an outstanding professional record 51 victories including 34 knockouts with four losses and two draws ladies and gentlemen from flushing new york here is the former two-time world champion the flushing flash kevin Kevin, but I live.
Olympia, fight clean, and good luck. Buena suerte. Kevin Kelly clearly hopes to use his experience and his southpaw style to outsmart and confuse Morales. But can he outsmart those rocks that will be coming at his head and for they most will be of the coming, night? They will be coming all night. And that's you the ready, problem. Kevin? Because Morales is a committed, energetic, hard. Yes, Eric Morales is a pace setter type fighter. He comes out and he sets the pace. He doesn't wait to react to your action. And Kevin is going to be a little crafty early in the fight. And then he has a rhythm that sometimes throws a lot of fighters off. I know Ed Hamid complained about he had problems getting his own rhythm together because Kevin has his own rhythm. What about Kevin's chin against Morales' power? Well, you know, it's it's a new division for Morales right now, moving up. He's fighting with bigger guys, and sometimes bigger guys can take the punch a lot better than those smaller guys. <laughs> Kelly's problem to me is not been so much his chin. Is a lot of times as fights move on, he has a tendency often to swell around his eyes, and that could be a factor too possibly in the fight. And also to get emotionally involved and start to exchange. Well, that's something he shouldn't do. He should keep the fight at the same tempo that it's going right now to his advantage. But I don't think Morales is going to permit that to happen. First loss of Kevin Kelly's career took place here in Texas when his eyes swelled so badly against Alejandro Gonzalez that he was blinded in the fight and simply was unable to continue. Kevin is switching around, if you notice. He just surprised as he changed into his standard right-hand stance for a moment. tentative first round. Well, Morales' is best punch is his right hand. He's really a, throws sometimes too many right hands. And that's very good, particularly for fighting the south pole. I call him the air force. That, that's the right hand right there. When, when he's really on and he's landing hard with the right hand, he loves to bring it straight over the top, like Sandy Koufax throwing a fastball. But he's fighting and de delivering the right hand the proper way for a southpaw. Today, he shoots the straight right hand right through the center with almost the same form that you would shoot a right jab. Because normally he throws overhand rights, which would not be effective with a southpaw. Morales, trained by his father, at one point that Eric wouldn't become a professional boxer. Then he matched him with tough opponents early in his pro career and saw how easily Eric won, and he said, well, I'm wrong. Let's let him what, fight. What's, what's interesting is that Morales is getting very close before he punches. He, 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 he isn't throwing punches from the distance where Kelly could time him. He's actually moving in and goes into a bob and weave motion and then punches, which doesn't give Kelly the time to anticipate and get away from his punches. Kelly lands a left hand. Morales fires back with a right. One of the things you saw in Morales Barrera is that if you hurt Eric, if you hit him, he wants to come back right away. Big right hand by Morales there. He's, he's putting a lot more pressure on Kelly than Kelly wanted. Hard left hand he's, by Morales. Good round for Morales. Yep. Good, good round. Rallied in the last minute of the round to win it. And as we go to Morales' corner where they speak Spanish, our interpreter is the great Ray Torres. How are you feeling the distance? You've got to take the distance so you can do better. You're going to do great if you stay at a distance. Let's, let's get, take a deep breath. You won the first round. Respira. Dame una respiradita. Okay, perfecto. You that he's got to be worried about, not us worried about him. Do you understand? Fuck him. You got that, right? Deep breath. Little key, little baby key. Okay. Whose time is this? Okay. Emmanuel, you were saying that because Morales was getting so close to Kelly, Kelly couldn't see what was coming at him, but his, but Morales' corner seemed to suggest that they wanted more distance between him and Kelly. Well, I think that's a mistake. I think Morales is fighting the perfect fight. He's getting very close to it, and, and, and most southpaws are basically counterpunchers. Most all southpaws are counterpunchers. And by getting close to him it, it, before he punches and going into a little weave motion, it's not giving Kelly the time to get away from the punches. 
the old trick in boxing, if you fight in South Paris, I always would say crowd and pressure. Donkey box numbers in the first round, tremendously one-sided. Morales landing 16 of 44. Kevin Kelly only seemed to have landed four of 60 punches. And there's a big right hand by Morales, straight up the gut, and the uppercut lands too. Kevin Kelly taking some thunder early on. But all of these punches are short punches, and whatever he shoots the long punches, Kelly usually can counter punch and get away from him. Bill Borgia telling Kevin Kelly he should have to worry about us. We don't have to worry about him. Easier said than done with a fighter of Morales' talent. Is that another way of saying to Kevin, you got to throw more punches? So once again, Kelly got to a conviction of right-hand position again. And Kelly watches as Morales... I don't think the right-hand position is effective. You notice he only turns in that position, but he doesn't punch or do anything effective from the position. Much, much slimmer to... Shane Moser, when he fought Oscar De La Hoya, he switched to a southpaw position, but never did punch effectively from that position. Yeah, but Kelly is now trying to fire back rather than just elude um, Eric. He's a little bit more into it right now. Morales still landing the more solid punches, particularly that straight right hand, which Emmanuel pointed out early in the fight. A little different from the previous Morales right, which we always saw as an overhand force. He's altered his game a little bit for the southpaw, and it's working big time. He's working very close. Even though he's a taller fighter, he's, he's fighting in a closer position. And physically, when they collide, it's seemingly he's much stronger than Kelly, even though Kelly has been the featherweight throughout his career. Well, you and anticipated something I was about to ask you, Emmanuel. <laughs> you wonder if Morales... Uh, like Trinidad is actually going to be a better fighter at the higher weight. Well, he's probably been a featherweight for a long time, and that's what's been his handicap in his other previous fights. That he had to strip down those last four pounds. So you're suggesting that Morales Barrera at 126 might look different than it looked at Deep 122. But more on that later. Deep, Deep, yeah. Deep. Loose, this is a little tight, isn't this? This is a little tight. I need to see his face right now. I need to see his face. Look up at me. Rinse this out, and I need to look right in the way. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. You're just getting into your mode. Relax. We're not in a hurry. Mira. We're not in a hurry. Do you understand? Okay. You, you need to move to his left. And we still need that distance. He's very defensive. Make sure you try to hit him in the body so you can weaken him. Here is the Mr. Wright of Eric Morales, one of the best pure punches in the game. Let's go. Well said. Round three begins, and you heard Phil Borgia saying to Kevin Kelly, we're not in a hurry, but already he's behind two rounds, so... If they have a plan, it must be to set up a knockout in the late rounds. Meanwhile, I think Morales wanted to come out and put some leather on Kelly early to blunt his hopes and create uncertainty in his mind. Yes, but the Kelly does have the power and the experience to still possibly score enough scat. He's not, he's not out of the fight. He's very much in the fight. And it's interesting that... The way that Morales' fight is exactly what I feel is the proper way, and his corner wants him to fight at a longer distance. Kelly switches to a conventional stance, now back to southpaw, now to a conventional stance, now back to southpaw. Hard left to the body by Morales as Kelly was switching to a conventional stance again. Morales seizing the moment to fire in and drive that left hook. But it's interesting that every time that Morales gets hit with a punch, he retaliates right away. Always. Straight left hand lands for Kelly. And 
expected landed punches have been few and far between for Kelly. But he's starting to loosen up the left just a little bit. Oh, a lot of power punching this round. The big question is how long can he maintain that? If he can maintain this tempo, it would be a very interesting fight. Break! Well, he is a relaxed fighter. And he said to us yesterday in the meeting that maybe the scenario would be something like George Foreman against Michael Moore. And of course, you'll recall that Foreman lost the first round, nine rounds to Moore rather one-sidedly. So he's following the script so far. Every time Morales throws the left jab now, he's coming back. Kelly is coming back with his own left. Yes. Right there again. He's done it four times in a row. And there's the overhand right and a right uppercut. And Kevin Wallman through the ropes. But the experienced fighter that he has, you've noticed, Kelly grabbed and tied up his man and tricked him and tried to smother him. And now comes back with a left to try to back Morales up. Right! I thought for a moment I was going to have Kevin in my lap here. Kevin is counter-punching every time that Morales shoots the jab. He's counting with his own straight left. But it's just a matter of youth against a fighter who has had a lot of rough fights and going down the stretch. I think the young fighter just going to be a little too strong. Too much. Swelling just outside the right eye of Morales, though, as he goes to his corner. Don't despair. You got him now. All he's trying to do is survive. Don't despair. Do you understand? I got you. I feel it. Okay. All right. Keep the flow going. Everything comes off sugar. And then your hands come natural, just like we've been doing. Okay? He's dropping his left hand. Every time. You understand? Check it out. Do you understand? Check it out. 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 Why would Morales be despairing, as they indicated in his corner? Did he expect a knockout in the first minute and a half of the fight? I think they may have expected that. But, you know, by his own admission yesterday, he said he was going to help out in the first three or four rounds. <laughs> Kelly's fighting a very good fight. And a guy that has not as good a chin as Morales, he may have knocked him down by now. Because Kelly's landed some pretty good shots himself. But Morales has proven in the Barrera fight that he does have a very good chance. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through the first three okay, rounds? Okay, Jim. Three to nothing, 30 to 27. Eric Morales. You know, Jim, I hate to say it. I don't think Kevin's made a good fight at all. I, he's getting beat up. I mean, he's moving to the left right into Eric Morales' powerful right hand. It's the wrong way to go. He, you know, I, I'm pure punching. Eric's murdering him. And Kevin doesn't have anything to hurt Eric with. It's all Eric Morales. You heard Phil Borza telling Kelly between rounds, Morales is dropping his left hand every time. It would be better for Kelly if Morales would drop his right hand and make room for Kelly's left. <laughs> It looks as if both fighters are looking for knockouts. Neither one is prepared to win a decision. Or maybe Morales feels it's so easy to win a decision in this circumstance that he can go ahead and fight for the knockout because he's winning every round anyway. You know, Kevin Kelly has a good record as a puncher himself. Well, no question about it. Well, I, there's no question in my mind that... If Kevin has a script for winning the fight, it is by KO. He's going to have to put Morales on his back at some point to win this fight. It seems that he's looking to try to land a good straight left hand punch to try to knock out Morales. It's interesting because Kevin wants to counter everything Eric throws, and Eric wants to counter when Kevin throws at him. Yes. So it's counter, counter, counter. But in, in the close quarters, though, Morales is much more effective. Too quick. Yes. In addition to the straight right hand, he also has a good right uppercut, where Kelly's punch has primarily been just as simply the straight left. 
He hasn't even utilized his right jab too much effectively. Morales' pace slowing considerably now in the fourth round. And you mentioned at the beginning of the fight, he's a set-the-pace fighter. As his pace slows, yes. Kelly gets these chances. Yes, and it, what, what happens once you get hit him, it gives him new energy. <laughs> Oh, it looks like he, wakes him up. he was trying to trap Kelly into coming at him. <laughs> and he got it done. Break! Let go! Let go of him! He laid a trap. Yep. And Kevin walked right into it. Yes, it is. All right, tune in Tuesday, September 12th for the next edition of Real Sports with Brian Gumbel. Among the stories, a look at gymnastics coach Bella Caroli, who's been able to develop Olympic winners, but with controversial methods. Also, a profile of Washington Redskins owner Daniel Snyder, raising eyebrows with his aggressive methods from signing free agents to charging to watch practice. We'll soon see if this brings an immediate championship. Real Sports, where nothing is out of bounds. Floyd Mayweather Sr. sitting below Morales' corner as Eric Morales' father does the talking to the fighter between rounds. Come on. I got it. It's coming down. It's coming down. Let's go. Mayweather Sr. speaks limited Spanish. Morales speaks limited English. <laughs> Copy box numbers through round four, supporting Harold's card. Morales, 53 of 169, 31%. Kevin Kelly, 34 out of 214, landing only 16% of his punches. And it's interesting that the copy box numbers show Kelly throwing more punches because it feels like Morales sets the pace. Yes. Break! No punches, no punches. Saw the experience of Kelly as he was punching and pivoted and spinning off, but Morales couldn't sustain a good attack. There's a big counter left by Kelly. Morales has a pretty doggone good chin. Well, I'll tell you what, I have to give Kelly credit too. He's taking some good shots tonight. This is turning out to be a good fight, and it's not a boxing match. It's two guys who are going for knockouts. How about Morales starting to mix in the left hook and with terrific effect here? That's a new weapon. Primarily, Morales is a right-hand puncher, and that's what was, uh, Barrera was so effective in his fight with him because he trained to neutralize Morales' right hand, and that was a very effective move, and that prevented Morales from being so effective with Barrera. Our good left right hand. hand by Morales knocks Kevin Kelly's chin up in the air. Kevin guarding and going down. Just too many punches. It was the body punch that sank him. Yes. Kelly talking to Lawrence Cole. A long time to go. I, I think his head is clear. Yeah, his head is clear. I just think that body punch, the body punch. took the wind out of him. And whether it was voluntary or not, it was wise for him to go down. Oh, there's a big right hand. Yes. Kevin takes that one pretty well. Comes back countering with his left. Now jabbing to try to keep Morales at bay. But this, this still is a dangerous fight for Morales also, because this is stage, Kelly is still punching with full power. Absolutely. Kevin trying to counter Morales' big right hand with a big left of his own. I think after this fight, no one can question not only the, the guts, but also the chin of Kevin Kelly. He's taking what some massive shots. Oh, yes, he is. Well, this is becoming a, a mini Barrera Morales right here. Okay, let's get some more on his head here. We need to rub him down. Ahí está. Muy bien. Respirando duro. 
respirando duro. No le tires, eh, no le tires ya, no le tires. Evita respirando. estar con él y quedar en clinch para los uppers. Se le está aprovechando a hombros y codos para cuando te quedas en upper. Que ahora no se quedó, doctor. El muy vivo. The body punch that will set it all up. Coming after that big right hand. Boom, 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 boom. I'm going to shoot you right down, as the great John Hooker once sang. Would that be John Lee Hooker? Yeah. John Lee Hooker, indeed. Right to the body, right to the head. 21 of Morales' 25 connections in round five by CompuBox numbers were power shots. Eric Morales is a brilliantly talented fighter, but you watch this fight and you have to ask two questions. How long will his career last if he continues to casually take power shots from his opponents the way he's doing here and the way he has done in other fights? And could he take those power shots from Prince Nassim Hamed, who looms as his biggest competition in this division? And also, I have to point out, Nassim Hamed is probably one of the biggest punchers in the history of the featherweight division. Regardless of what his other shortcomings may be, he is a tremendous puncher. So if, if, if Morales allowed himself to take power shots from Naz the way he has from Barrera and Kelly... That's true, you know, but also you know, Morales is a good puncher himself. I know. You know, so if, if he led versus Naz could be in trouble, but I, it's going to be a very interesting fight. <laughs> I can't wait to see it. <laughs> Come on, Naz. Take one of these fights. Morales was quite upset at our suggestion on the telecast of Prince Nassim's fight that he had turned down the opportunity to fight Nas. Basically, Morales said, hey, look, they never made an official offer, and I didn't have to deal with an official offer. We'll fight him when the time comes, just you wait and see. Uh, and their timetable is not until next spring or summer, actually. Morales not to hold Kelly behind the head. Kevin's right eye is beginning to swell as Morales tags him with a right to the chin and Kelly comes back with a counter left. Not too many people in any of these the fights that these warriors have had have ever asked for their money back after this, watching them fight. This has turned out to be a good fight and very few clinches too. And he's been taking some unbelievable punches, especially having not been that active the last couple of years. Well, as Kevin Kelly said, hey, I grew up on the streets of Queens. Does he think I'm not tough enough for him? You watch. Oh, my God. Well, I tell you what, he hasn't had anything tougher in Queens than he has tonight in this <laughs> ring here down in El Paso. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. <laughs> because Morales grew up in the toughest section of Tijuana. Try that one. Yeah, that's a tough city, too. That's <laughs> Let's keep it clean, Kevin. Twin attractions. Our first ever ring card twins, Yolaila and Yolanda Ortiz. Yet another reason to come to El Paso for round seven. I need a combination. You make him miss his right hand. He's wide open. I can't. I got too many things. There's Morales. He missed the right. Missed the left. How much is Kevin Kelly willing to take? How do you have it scored through six, Harold? Okay, Jim, I got it six to nothing. 60 to 53, Eric Morales. You got to give him an extra point for that knockdown in round five. So far, Eric Morales winning this fight basically on clean, effective, strong punching. Nothing else. Clean punching, Jim. 
I'll bet, you, I'll bet you anything, incidentally, Larry, no matter how many punches Kevin takes, and win or lose, he'll be in the bar at the hotel tonight to talk about it. <laughs> and he'll talk all the way to the bar and all the way when he leaves the bar. And he'll close the bar. <laughs> You know, it's, it's not, not to suggest that he spends a lot of time at bars. No, he's just the most gregarious animal in the sport, that's all. <laughs> and you know, it's, it's interesting, even though on Harold's scorecard he's lost all of the rounds, a lot of people don't understand what that means. It means that the rounds have been, some of them good rounds, but nevertheless that was a winner and that was a loser. But many people would be upset at hearing that because they say, well, this has been a tough fight. But even though Kelly's fighting a good fight and has his moments, still the majority of the round is dominated by Morales. Because exchanges like this show Morales' tenacity and determination. Larry, the question that you had earlier that you put to Kevin Kelly now is coming to the surface. Are you willing to die? Right? Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, he was hit with the, the punch that knocked him down came about four punches before the punch that finally got him down. He's not firing back now. He's not firing back. Yes, he is. There he goes. And, and is, he is still dangerous. Kelly's wife, Valerie, standing up in her seat. Earlier, you heard that he bet Manfredi ran to Angel's Corner that the fight be stopped. Valerie's been through this a lot. If he doesn't return a punch, please go down. That's good. Oh, it's a big right hand that he landed to stop Morales in his tracks. There's still some fight left in the old Warriors. But he's virtually defenseless. And he's almost blind in the right eye. going nuts about the stoppage. Boys are trying to say the round was over apparently. Kelly's upset with the stoppage. Morales has another victory. Do you know, even though he was being hit a lot, he wasn't being hit cleanly, and the fact that he would return punches still made it interesting, and he was still dangerous at this point to me. 30 seconds was, left in the round. Yeah, it was more so a case of one guy seemingly being physically stronger, and, and uh, Kelly's legs not being up and being sturdy enough. I just think Lawrence Cole was uncomfortable seeing Kevin take that much punishment. Larry, I mean, what do you think? Give me, give me. I think it was an accumulation of his perceptions that, that this is not going to ever change. And let's give Kevin all of his due. He committed as much as he could. He went as far as he could. Just like Manfredi earlier, he's a pro. A total professional Kevin Kelly. But Eric Morales takes another step forward. And because one of the governing bodies in the wake of Espadas' departure from the fight worried that Morales and his Mexican fans would be upset that he wasn't fighting for a title, they decided to designate it as, quote, an interim title fight, so he can now say that he's won a title at 126 pounds. Of course, in our view, the title holder at 126 pounds is Prince Nassim Hamed until somebody beats him. Let's take a look at the replays, starting with the knockdown, Larry. Yeah, Jim, I thought there was a terrific right hand right there. And, and Kevin was already out of it and just punching back reflexively. And it was just a matter of time till he went down because Morales gave him no rest. Morales used to be a boxer puncher. He has become a boxer brawler and feels invincible. All right. Boxer brawler, though. I mean, it, it, he would go in against Prince Nassim, Emmanuel, it seems to me, and he would want to fight a war. I think it would end up being a war because he has that much confidence in his punching powers, what that says to me. 
he feels that physically he can overpower most of the guys that he fight. And also, I think he has confidence in his ability to take a punch. And, and Naz would welcome a war, wouldn't he? It would be a great fight. It would be an exciting fight because... Now, here's another look at the end of the fight. Phil Borgia, the trainer for Kevin Kelly, jumped up on the ring apron and heatedly went after referee Lawrence Cole, claiming that the round was over. But we're looking at the official clock right next to us. There were 30 seconds remaining in the round. Here's what you're talking about. Not all of the punches landing cleanly. Cole electing to stop it. You're saying, Emmanuel, that it could have gone on. Let's hear if there's an accidental bell. Well, there, Kevin was definitely throwing back. Now listen up. Well, you know, one of the things that a referee is instructed to, that if an opponent is on the ropes, and if it wasn't for the ropes being there, do you think he would have fell down? And that is probably what he considered also, that the ropes was holding him up, and he was not returning punches. Official scorecard saw Morales well in front, 59-54, 60-52, 60-53. He, in effect, had the fight won on the scorecards. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official particulars on the stop. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Lawrence Cole steps in and calls a halt to the contest. The official time, 2 minutes 30 seconds of round number 7. The winner, who is now the interim champion, de Zona Norte, Tijuana, Baja, California, Mexico, Eric El Terrible Morales. Final copy box numbers, Kevin Kelly. Got off to a very slow start in punch stat numbers, but eventually heated up a little bit, landing 75 out of 362 and upping his percentage to 21%. Morales helped make that possible for him because as Eric saw himself more and more dominant in the fight, he simply opened up, threw power punches, left opportunities for Kevin to counter, but clearly felt as though he was the stronger fighter and was going to go forward. Let's go to Larry Merchant in the ring with the winner. Thank you, Jim. Congratulations, Eric. Do you feel that you are a stronger fighter now at featherweight? ¿Se siente que eres un peleador más fuerte hoy en día en el peso pluma? Yo creo que sí. Yo creo que hemos mejorado un poco con la con la con los cuatro libras que tuvimos ahora de ventaja. Yeah, absolutely so. The four pounds have helped me a lot. I feel stronger. Creo que me vi un poco más rápido que otras veces. And I looked a lot faster today than usually. Were you surprised that a veteran fighter like Kevin Kelly was able to stand up to your punches for so long? Yeah. He's, a, he's a good fighter and, and, and a veteran that knows all around. In the, in the, in the beginning, he was moving around, and then it, uh, he was. Uh, then I had to go after him in, in the later rounds. Do you feel now that you are more of a offense? Good. Bueno, antes que nada, porque no le vas a acabar la entrevista. Before anything else, he wants to say. Quiero quiero dar las gracias al señor Bob Aaron por esta oportunidad. He wants to uh, acknowledge and thank Bob Aaron for this opportunity. A quien le dedico esta pelea, que es una persona que me ha apoyado mucho en mi carrera. And I want to dedicate this fight to Bob Aaron that uh, because he has always supported me. Quiero decirle que espero responderle a la gente como gran mexicano. And I want to uh, tell him that I want to respond to the people like a great Mexican. All right. Eric, was he, were, were you ever hurt by any of his punches? Fighting for the first time, uh, an experienced uh, full featherweight. ¿Alguna vez te, te hirió con los golpes? ¿Te hizo daño? Porque él, él es un, un pluma verdadero. No, no, creo que este, en algunas veces me conectó, pero no nada serio. He hit me a few times, he caught me a few shots, but nothing serious, nothing hurt. What are your plans for the future? You've talked about wanting a rematch with Barrera. You've talked about wanting to fight Hamed. There's been a little confusion about what your plans exactly are. Who would you like to fight next? 
¿Cuáles son tus planes para el futuro? Tú has eh, dicho que hicieron una revancha con Barrera o una pelea con Hamed. ¿Quién es que tú quieres en el futuro? Oh, realmente yo creo que los dos son buenos peleadores y quiero enfrentarlos a los dos. I believe they're both good fighters, they're both good fighters, and I want to uh, face both of them. No because I'm ellos. not afraid of either one of them. Porque 122, casi muriéndome, peleé contra Barrera. Because at 122 pounds, almost dying to make that weight, I fought Barrera and you Cien, saw the fight. 126, estoy listo para Margarita. At 126 pounds, no I'm, I'm listening to Barrera, Hamed, or anyone. Thank you very much. Again, congratulations. All right, Jim. All right, thank you very much, Larry. Uh, Emmanuel, the wonderful part of having you as expert commentator is that you have been both a great trainer and a great manager, and I can pick on you for uh, uh, training Prince Nassim Hamed. But Larry alluded to the two huge fights that are on the table for uh, Morales, a rematch with Mark Anto Marco Antonio Barrera, now four pounds farther north at 126, and the match against Prince Nassim Hamed. If you're managing or promoting Morales, in which order do you want to take those fights? Well, I would have Hamid probably first because I mean, Hamid is like the, hitting a lottery for all of the featherweights. Everything centers around Preston Seam Hamid. But by the same token, Hamid may have his shortcomings, but he still is the most dangerous single punch boxer, I think, in boxing today. And that bar is probably the heavyweight. Uh, you mean the hardest puncher for his weight? For his weight, I think he is. He, he punches tremendous with one punch. Uh, but Corrales is a dangerous fight, but no one brings the money you to You mean the table. Barrera? Barrera. Yeah. But yeah. no one brings the money to the table that comes with Hamid. So, so in other words, don't let the money get away. By losing to Barrales, go ahead, I mean, by losing to Barrera, go ahead and fight uh, Hamid now. I think if they fight at a different weight, I think that Morales would beat Barrera because, first of all, I think it's more his natural weight. And also, I believe that Barrera still is nothing but a, a junior featherweight. I think that's the gamble he's going to take. I have the sense that they're going to take the gamble that they can beat Barrera at 126, then fight Hamed for even bigger dollars, but we'll wait and see. Meanwhile, let's go back into the ring for Larry and hear what Kevin Kelly has to say. All right, thank you again, Jim. Uh, Kevin, it seemed that you gave it your best shot, but he just had too many shots on you at the end of the night. I could have given it a better shot. The problem, like I said, you know, make no excuse, no great. I want to say School of Hard Knocks. The specs behind me, I like my career. School of Hard Knocks, baby. I want to say, uh, you know, Jewish Juice Plus, another endorsement. But the bottom line is that tonight, you know, with all the extras I have in boxing, all the experience I got in boxing, tonight, I just, my body just was 33, and my brain was 22. And tonight, my body, my back leg, making no excuses, he's a great young fighter. The bottom line is, he didn't hit as hard as I expected. I expected him to hit a lot harder. I was taking his best shot. I was even telling him, go ahead, you're going to knock me out. And I was going down pretty much, not from the punches. I was going down because he was throwing so many punches. From exhaustion. To get out the way. Yeah. Just to get out the way. All right. Is Hamed a bigger puncher than him, having fought oh, yes. him? Yes, he is. Uh, Morales, I think, is going to grow to be a strong featherweight. Right now, he's not a strong featherweight. That's why I went to exchange with him. I wanted to get exchange because I felt I was a harder puncher than two. What happens between Hamed and Morales? That's all to Hamed. You know, I mean, the bottom line tonight, I use a lot of tactics that Hamed would be using. I switch lefty, righty. But my leg, my back leg started cramping up. I could not do that no longer. So I think that Morales and Hamed, I, I, I know it. You can't pick fights. You can pick horseshoes. And the bottom line is that Morales and Hamed are both two gallant warriors. And I believe that Hamed's got the experience and the agility to beat a Morales. Is this the end of the road for you? Possibly could be, you know, like I said, you know, I'll go home, I won't contemplate it. I got Carol Nation next week, I'll see you guys there. You know, ATN, the Black Rhinos fighting. Bronco McCartney, we'll be right. It's the wit still shot. All right, keep talking, Kevin. Keep talking. Okay. Keep going. Back to you, Jim. <laughs>